So I wanted to welcome Mike Horn, uh, extreme adventurer, explorer to the Watchbox here in Hong Kong. It's a real pleasure, a real honor to have someone like you here. Um, if, for those of you who don't know, Mike is an ambassador for uh, Panerai watches. There are uh, several Mike Horn edition watches um, that are available for sale. Um, so Mike, you started with the South African Special Forces. You gave everything away, moved to Switzerland, ski instructor, mountain, mountaineering training, turned into global adventurers. Where do you get the energy, the motivation for these kind of things? You know, I think when you, um, you love what you do, that's what you like doing at the end of the day. And I um, uh, succeeded a little bit in the world of business and just found out that um, I wanted more freedom and not necessarily more money and more tangible objects. I just wanted time. And that's... Uh, when I gave everything I had, I gave it away and I decided to leave um, South Africa that at that stage was still pretty much boycotted by the rest of the world. So yeah. we weren't free to travel. That's right. So Switzerland was one of the few choices you had. Exactly. So South Africans could only go to Switzerland, Israel, uh, and it was Greece. Okay. So, okay. Um, <laughs> you know, uh, I, I got on the plane and well, I got to the airport and got on a standby ticket to Switzerland and that's where I arrived and that's where I live today. Okay. And that is as well, if you think of watches or timepieces, the capital of the world. Sure. Okay. Wow, that's fantastic. You're obviously a very fit guy when you do these different adventures. Do you do specific training for depending on what you're about to do or do you just have a sort of gen general conditioning regime that works uh, quite I, well? I think that, you know, um, our life as an explorer uh, depends on, on first of all your knowledge and, and your experience and then uh, your mental attitude towards what you are going to do mm -hmm. uh, and your your physical condition um, gives you the power uh, to the mind to actually make decisions because you know until what limit you can push yourself yes. and to be able to know yourself very well uh, is very important and the mind is always um, overpowering the body yeah, okay. And when the body wants to stop, uh, that's when you have to be able to control your mind. Yeah. And uh, I think it's 20% uh, physical power and 80% mental power. Wow. Okay. And if you, if you don't only believe yourself, but you can practice that belief, uh, then, then you can push your mind and your body beyond what you know. Right. It's um, as well a little bit about the, the willingness to win and the fear we constantly have of failure. To, of, of, of failure. Yeah, wow. And it's when the will to win becomes bigger than the fear to lose that you can actually go out there and, and, and achieve amazing things. So okay. to be able to do that, your, your body needs to be well-trained. Your mind needs to be well-trained. You've got to focus on, on what's important and everything that's not important that we worry so much about in our daily lives should disappear mm -hmm. and the okay. moment that you really focus on on what you need to do to get to your objectives that's when things can happen you cannot it's like in life you cannot only do what you like doing there's sometimes things that you have to do that you don't like doing and if you can start liking the things that you don't like doing that's when you live a fuller life and, right. and things become possible okay wow that's great fascinating so you're wearing the pole-to-pole -pole, uh, Panerai. Here we have this, the same watch here. Uh, we'll get some shots of your watches together in a little while. Can I have a look at a, yeah. a new one? <laughs> yeah, see what a new one looks like compared to, to a, a pre-owned one, we would say. A pre-owned one. They're both pre-owned, but one has been yeah. a bit more used than the other. What, what is actually amazing is the more you, you use it, the newer it looks. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> and. Uh, the value of this watch is, I think, as well, that it would last forever. That's it's right. With a good watch, it's, it's built to last, and as long as you take good care of them, then they, 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 they last forever, right? And I think, I think as well, it's, it's what we need today. We need quality more than quantity. And, and to be able to invest in, in something like this um, that's got an authentic and a true story to tell is always a, a, a a way of starting a conversation with somebody and when you can say this is the only watch that crossed the South Pole, yeah. uh, people straight away look at the watch in a different manner than 
just buying a watch off the and self just, and, and just putting and it on and wearing yeah, it. Yeah, and wearing it. So yeah. to have my my name on the watch and to be able to see this is the first one I see that's available. Wow, um, okay. Um, obviously, you know, it's it's quite emotional to know that there are actually watches out, out there, there that yeah. people can buy that's the same as the one that I used crossing the pole. Wow, fantastic. So you've been working with Panerai for quite a while now. Um, how much involvement do you have with the watches that you come up with, the pole to pole, the new pieces that have come out? Are there any features yeah. that, uh, that you're really sort of quite proud that you, that you came up with, that you worked with them for? You know, being able to work with Panerai, that's a relatively small brand uh, that, that could make timepieces to fit my needs, uh, I think was why the relationship last, last, lasted and is still lasting uh, for such a long time because each timepiece they make for me uh, is specific, uh, specifically adapted to my needs. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, the, the North Pole watch, for example, uh, where I tried to do the first ever winter expedition to the North Pole in 2006 um, with Borgi Ausland, um, they had to make a watch that um, I could use for navigation. So when your crystal liquid starts freezing at min minus 18, you can only use time because a compass above the magnetic pole turns no in circles. So you yeah. can't use your GPS outside. You can't use compasses. And that's where time becomes the way of navigating. If your watch loses time, you lose direction. Yep. You know that the sun moves 15 degrees each hour, and if your watch loses an hour a day, you lose 15 degrees of, of heading, and mm -hmm. that to us is, is very important. Right, okay. So to be able to use the watch as a, as a, as a true navigational instrument um, is um, what Panerai has always supplied me. They supplied okay. watches, double casing, special oils, that I could read at night with not, not a lot of light, um, where the watch is not, not exposed to a lot of, a lot of uh, light. Yeah. And that makes, makes it easy for me. What, what you have to remember as well is that the metal casing you can't wear on your skin because the metal casing actually freezes mm -hmm. to your skin. And when you try and remove the watch, you remove your skin, your skin with it. along with it. So <laughs> okay. where you wear the watch and how you use the watch becomes becomes very important. Right, okay. So you're wearing the pole to pole. Um, Watchbox has a pole to pole uh, available right now as well. It's a piece yeah. that you like to wear every day. We're gonna get some close up shots of your watch later on, but just to, to see what a watch, is the first, the on, first and only watch that yeah, I was, the North um, Pole? On this, on this expedition, pole to pole, the idea was um, to, to cross both poles. Mm -hmm. There's the South and the North Pole, and I managed to cross the North Pole on its widest part, and there was 5,100 kilometers of uncharted territory that I had to go, go through where navigation was only done mm -hmm. uh, with my Panerai. And for me, it, it's, an, it's, it's an instrument that writes history. It's not just... Uh, an advertising campaign. It's something um, that that would last forever. A, a, a watch or a timepiece for me that writes history will stay green. It's evergreen. It will never become old. Mm -hmm. And all the watches that that Panerai made for me um, allowed me uh, to do to do expeditions that wrote history in the world of exploration. And there's very few brands I think that still have that authentic, true um, marketing um, behi behind them. Yeah. And um, Panerai, they have invested in, in me for 19 years and, and each watch that they made for me wrote history in the world of exploration. So I'm, I'm very proud of, of, of wearing these watches that's authentic and true. Sure, that's great. So this year you just, um, the Panerai released the newest p uh, model, the 984 to 985. Tell us a little bit about the sort of the environmental impact that this watch has. You've just recycled titanium. Can yeah, I, I've, I've, seen, I've seen the world change through, new, through 30 years of exploration. Um, living outside, you know, I've, uh, I've lived more in a tent than at home. <laughs> and to be able to see the world change made me a little bit concerned as well. And that's why uh, it became important for me not just to make another product or to put another watch 
on the market, but to be able to use uh, uh, eco titanium, to be able to use uh, recycled um, materials to make the, uh, the, 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 um, the strap. And I think that's the way that business uh, and can make a change in, in our biggest problem that we have today, which is the environment. Mm -hmm. And to be able to live in a sustainable way by making um, sustainable timepieces is the first step in the interest industry to be able uh, for us to live more comfortably on our planet for longer. Yeah, yeah, absolutely makes a lot of sense. Um, so after this 984, 985, are there any future models that are planned? Anything, any sort of hints or tidbits you can, you can tell us? You know, I, I, I would always want to design uh, a watch for one specific expedition where mm -hmm. there would only be one of. And um, we are busy looking at a combination of all the, um, the expeditions that I've done, all the features that I needed in all the watches around, um, during 20 years of exploration and combine all these features mm -hmm. in, in, in one amazing timepiece. And that would, would be most probably the end of my life as an explorer because, you know, um, I, I'm 53 years old and, and, you know, I can feel that pushing the limits and boundaries of exploration um, is not going to last forever. So to be able to combine everything that I've done with Panerai in, in one timepiece to, to celebrate a life of exploration and for them of watchmaking um, is definitely a project that's, uh, that, we, that we're looking at. at yeah, that'd be incredible, it'd be very impressive. Yeah. So talking about your next adventure, you're still adventuring right now. You're planning to summit, try and summit K2? Yeah, I've been to K2 um, twice and unfortunately in, in 2013 and, and, and 15, uh, nobody managed to, to get to the summit. Un unfortunately, um, people that tried um, were killed and, and you know, that makes exploration um, still a dangerous uh, sport to participate in. Mm -hmm. And to be able uh, to stay alive, I think, is, is very important as an explorer because the mountain will always stay there. Um, we have to respect the mountain. When the mountain opens its doors for you to go through, you have to be ready. But when the mountain decides for you that it's not going to allow you to go to the top. That's when you have to respect uh, the um, not only the mountain, but the conditions that we find at, at certain altitudes uh, while climbing up into into thin air. Mm -hmm. And as I don't use any supplement oxygen, or I don't use ropes, or I don't use sherpas, mm -hmm. or I don't sleep on the mountain in in different camps, um, I. I try and climb the mountain in a natural state, uh, it means that I cannot um, make any mistakes because when I get to the summit, I'm only halfway there. Yep, and sure. if you only have 7% oxygen uh, and to be able to stay alive in this death zone with only 7% oxygen, I've got 24 hours and then my life ends. And to be able to make decisions with very little oxygen and to be able to turn back from the summit 100 meters from the summit or 50 meters from the summit, it takes a lot of strength. And I was unfortunate that in 2015, I, I had to turn back because of the danger of avalanches. And, and when others continued, unfortunately, uh, they died. And, okay. and mm -hmm. this year, hopefully, the mountain will allow me to go to the top. Okay. I mean, we've all seen recent reports about queues of people trying to summit Everest. Uh, there's the photo on the internet of, you know, it looks like people just trekking up the snow, but apparently people were dying while they were waiting to go up onto the mountain. I mean, what's your take on that sort of extreme, too many people at the same time? And how, is, how does Everest also compare to K2? Um, Everest being the highest mountain has become a, 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 an amazing brand. Uh, so if you want to value uh, what you do, you just put it against a powerful brand or stand with a powerful brand. Uh, K2 is not a powerful brand at all. K2 kills one out of four 
people. Uh, you've got very little chance to climb K2 um, if you're not an experienced climber, while Everest, anybody that's willing to climb um, up and is willing to pay the price can go. Mm. And I have a lot of respect for people that actually uh, go out there and, and climb it, but it's become such a, such a commercial um, uh, attraction uh, that it, it actually has no value for me as a climber anymore. And if I, I would love to climb Everest, uh, but I just don't have the finance to climb it. Right, it's, okay. become, it's become a commercial um, he that, that has a lot of money can, can go. And you can, you can get to the top, but you've got to stand in a queue. And where we usually climb on K2 and, and, and more remote, more difficult mountains, um, often we just alone on the summit and that's the beauty of, of climbing sure. and yeah. exploration is if you can go up there and come down and just be inspired by the mountain and be alone in places where usually you don't find people. Yeah, yeah, that's the ultimate, right, yeah. the ultimate goal. And so after K2, what are the, any other future plans? Yeah, okay, t this, uh, well, this is my my last day really in, in civilization or the, as we call civilization, and then I'll be heading up to K2 and after K2, um, I'll get on my boat, the Pangea uh, sailing vessel that I left in, in northern Japan in Hokkaido and jump on my boat and sail into the Bering Sea and then try and cross the North Pole to finish the pole to pole, pole -to -pole expedition. Pole -to -pole wow. And um, that would be the first yeah, ever circumnavigation of the world, crossing both poles. And I'm, I'm quite excited because the K2 expedition would, would be a lead up to the, 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 the crossing of the Arctic Ocean. And today with modern day communication methods and cameras that we can use, it will really be able to follow me live Mm -hmm. uh, and see what I see as I climb up the mountains. And wow. to have my, my daughters uh, support me and run the communication and, 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 and using the message that we would like to send out to the rest of the world as well, the respect for nature, the beauty of our planet, uh, the conservation of our natural resources. I think we can, we can touch a lot of people and to be able to share that with people and say, listen, come and have a look how the ridge of K2 looks like when you want to get to the summit and you can film it and see a 360 degree picture on what really happens uh, is what we're aiming for. So yeah, it would be interesting to follow and, and yeah, to, to live this experience together. Yeah, I'm sure we'll all be following you. Um, also, we can find out more about Mike. You have some yeah. books uh, uh, have been written already. No, I, th I don't know. I think I've written six or nine books. I'm okay. not sure. I stopped, I stopped counting. But right, various documentaries, TV shows about you. TV so shows, documentaries, and, yeah. and just sharing the passion, the passion of adventure and exploration and to be able to be supported uh, by, you know, brands like, like Panerai and, and, and Mercedes-Benz and the guys that actually support me and pay for what I do um, it makes me a privileged person. So I'm just trying to do my best in the world of exploration. So Mike, thank you very much for spending your last day in civilization Pleasure. with us at Watchbox yeah, here. Yeah. Uh, we wish you all the best with your K2 adventure. Make it to the top this time. We'll I'll all be try. following you on, online and on social media. And I hope to see you again sometime soon when you're back Definitely. in Hong Kong. Definitely. I'll be back. <laughs> <laughs> thank, thank you very much. much.